what I'm about to play for you right now is a clip from the interview involving two of the jurors on the Amber Geiger trial. Now, I have not listened to this entire clip. I've only I probably haven't even listened to a whole minute of it. This is a two minute clip right here. And I don't think I think I probably listened to maybe less than 30 seconds of it. And within that 30 seconds, I was already pissed off. But I'm going to check where I feel I need to. Us, the decision was not an easy one. There was a lot of crying. A lot of crying. When we were told to go decide between five and life, that was like we didn't have words. Prosecutors were asking for 28 years. They were. Um, you all landed at 10. After hearing about how his family talked about him, he seemed like just the light in their lives, and he was kind and just forgiving. caring and forgiving. And I, I said, I told everyone, I was like, I'm really having a hard time with this because we all agree that it was a mistake. And Okay, so you heard that. They said that right there... They they had the option to go, you know, five to life, where she ended up with 10. They said the prosecutor said 28, but they landed at 10. And they said when they heard the family talk about how he was and how he was this uh, forgiving type of person, that already lets you know. Well, let, let's put it this way. The mother's a forgiving person. The father said he wanted to be her friend. The the brother got up and practically hugged, hugged her. So it's pretty natural that Botham would probably be the same type of way that it, it pretty much ran through that entire family let's just put it that way but all that jury needed to hear even after all the stuff they heard from that entire trial you know the 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 the, the racism the infidelity the fact that this chick says she did it with intent and she was convicted of murder all they needed to hear from the family was that botham jean uh, john was a forgiving person and that's what made them conclude with a 10-year sentence that's all it took not that she was convicted of murdering this man or went into his apartment and shot him to death or she was very last of days of cool when she was when she was supposed to be tending to him to try to take care of him but she on her phone none of that mattered all that mattered was the hearing the family say how much of a forgiving person he is. That's all it took. That was all it took for them to come up with a light 10 year sentence. If that's the case, I really do not feel anything for the family now. I really don't. If that's all it took, then if that was all it took, why even go to trial? That was a waste of time and taxpayer dollars. Now I'm going to go ahead and continue. Now, mind you, I'm only 35 seconds in on a two minute clip. I don't think I th I don't think Bo would want to take harsh vengeance. I think he would Wait a minute. Hold on. Did this guy just say I don't think Bo? Did you know him to call him that? Did they ca Can someone tell me cuz I know I'm I only follow the, the the stream of the trial um up until the actual verdict reading. Did was Botham John's nickname Bo? Can someone let me know that in the comments? Was that his nickname? Did they call him that? Because I don't remember them referring to him as that. I want to forgive her. And I felt I didn't feel like I had any right to speak for him. No, hold on. Let me rewind that part because what he said right there, he literally contradicted himself. Hold on. I want to take harsh vengeance. I think he would want to forgive her. And I felt. I didn't feel like I had any right to speak for him. He said that he feels that he, that Botham, or as he called him, Bo, like he knew him, would not want to take any vengeance against her, but he felt like he can't speak for him. He just contradicted himself in like five seconds. So you just said that you feel that he would not feel, to, he would not want to take vengeance against her, but in the same breath say you can't speak for him. What did you just do? Just a couple of seconds ago in the same statement, you spoke for him and he can't speak for himself because the dead don't talk. He should have quit while he was ahead. And he isn't there to talk for himself. 
but listening to how people talked about him, I felt like he would forgive her. They and he did it again. Listen to how people talked about him. I felt like he would forgive her. But you know what's so crazy? As crazy as that sounds coming from him, he might actually be right. And it's crazy. And I say that because of how his family has been acting. Now, I pause it right there because now she's about to speak. Asked for 28 years, and I'm going to be honest and, and true. I was like, I can't give her 28 years. I know a lot. She said 28 years. I can't give her 28 years. And why does she sound like she chewing on something? Why does she sound like she got stuff in her mouth? She felt that 28 years. Mind you, Amber Geiger is 31. 28 years would mean she would get out when she is 59. She felt 28 years was too much for her. The people are not happy about the 10 years, but I feel like, you know, for this case was not like any other case. You can't compare this case. I pictures of each apartment. The layout was completely different. Listen to what she said. I'm going to rewind it back to what she said. You can't compare this case to any of those other officers killing unarmed black men. She said you can't compare this case to other officers killing unarmed black men. Well, one major comparison is the fact that a lot of them are getting off lightly. The only difference is Amber Geiger actually got a sentence. But it's still a very light one at the same time. So I don't know what in the hell she has been smoking. She says you can't compare these cases of officers killing unarmed black men with each other. Uh, I think you definitely can. But if you want to contrast, I think this one, like I said, was worse because of the optics behind it. Like she broke into his apartment claiming it was hers, shot him to death in his own apartment. And all she could th think about was getting her her um, excuse me, her her uh, her Hispanic dick. From a married man. I can't stress that enough how much of a thought this chick is. Those officers that kill unarmed black men, when they got out, they went back to living their lives. Amber Geiger, ever since she killed that man, she has not been the same. She showed her Hold on. Let me go back there. She says they when they uh when they killed unarmed black men, they got out and went on with their lives. What the hell you think gonna happen with Amber Geiger? She may not be able to go back into that apartment again, but I have a feeling she she'll be able to go back into society well ever so slightly when she does get out. And don't think for a second that they are not going to try to appeal this shit. They are they are laying it all out for you on the table that they are trying to appeal this. They are going to appeal this so she won't have to serve any jail time at all. She has not been the same. She showed remorse and that she's going to have to deal with that for the rest of her life. Please, that bitch ain't show no type of remorse. She only saying that because she actually got found guilty. I'm willing to bet if that verdict came back saying not guilty, then she would not be feeling no type of remorse. She would have been crying. No more tears. She would have been crying. Tears, all right. They would have been tears of joy and relief. And my thing is this, if they're going to do all of this, I'm talking about these two speaking right here in hell, even other judges, but I don't know, I can't speak for them because they're not there. Why even find the bitch guilty at all? Why even have a trial? This has got to be one of the worst trials I have ever seen in modern history. Can, can I give her a hug, please? Oh, God, here comes the... Please... It was this moment of grace and forgiveness to Geiger from John's brother, Brandt, that has the jurors convinced they made the right decision. And there you go. I, those of you who follow me on Twitter, I said that I bet you it was when the brother got up and said I wanted to give her a hug and embrace her the way that he did, which is what swayed those jurors. And what did the reporter just say that it was at that moment that the jurors, whatever, whatever. But they'll have you convinced that it was 
Botham's family saying that he was such a forgiving person as to why they made that decision. That could have very well been true, but it was that moment when the brother did what he did when they knew they had to give her a very light sentence. Instead of the family or the brother or the father saying that they hate this bitch and they want the worst to happen to her and they're not forgiving and she deserves the consequences of what she did for her actions, they would have given her a a much longer sentence than what they gave her. But the stuff that these two are talking about right here, they can go to hell in a hand basket with gasoline draws on with that shit. Found out this morning about what his brother did, and it kind of it kind of helped us uh, feel like we ended up with the right decision. They that that guy don't even sound like he know uh like he believes half the shit he's saying he, he's broken he's talking in broken speech patterns like nothing is coming out coherently whatsoever he's stumbling over his words i don't know if his nerves or if he just doesn't simply believe what he's what he's saying what is coming out of his mouth and they said looking at that let them know they made the right decision and they this entire trial was supposed to be about getting justice for his family and on his behalf but it played out like amber geiger was this helpless defenseless person this this little angel that needed to be coddled and defended and yet again it, it made it seem like botham john the deceased was the one who was wrong and it, the worst part about it is It played out in real time and we were able to witness it for the world to see that on a grand stage. And like I said, it's so many of us, you know, when I say us, I'm talking about us who, you know, who look like you and I, who have nothing. They feel nothing like they don't feel any type of way about this the way that you and I do. Like, they see nothing wrong with the brother doing what he did. They see nothing wrong with what the father said. They see nothing. Some of them don't see nothing wrong. You'll have someone someone say, I wouldn't have gotten up and hugged her or said that she would be my friend, but I will still forgive. Like, you're, okay, you might as well just say that you would you agree with the hug and the friend part. But I called it. I said, I bet you the brother, that part right there. They said that's what made them feel that they made the right decision. We're going to be talking about this for a while. Like this time next year, they probably going to revisit and say, oh, a year later, since the Amber Geiger trial, what has changed? Not a damn thing. I'll tell you that. Like I said in my initial video, all I can hope is that she has the worst time wherever it is that they got her ass at. That's all I can really say. Y'all let me know what y'all think about this down in the comments, and I'll talk to you in the next one.